So let's get to work. Um, I, this is going to be another night. I haven't. The last time I worked on this was Tuesday night. Today is Friday night, and um, I, it, tonight's going to be another night that I won't touch it. Hopefully tomorrow during the day I'll get to do some work on this. There's been a lot of uh, people asking me, uh, wanting to know a lot of information on nitros. Right? They've been texting me, emailing me, and back and forth with many people from all over the states. And um, oh, here we go. Um, and then, oh man, there's so many freaking questions. I should write every freaking thing down. Uh, one was fuel. I'm gonna say it again. The fuel that I recommend, all right, is 30% nitro, 11% oil, all right? If you guys are racing, go ahead, use your 8% oil, use your 9% oil. But we bash and we mess around and we run our engines all day long sometimes, right? So I use 30% nitro, 11% oil, all right? Let's, let's, let me show you the freaking. All right, you can get quarts and you can get gallons. All right, I got many quarts here. All right, the quarts are going to be cheaper. Right here. Quarts are going to be cheaper and probably um, less le uh, hazard fucking whatever the hell they charge you extra. All right, um, hopefully things will change now with the new crazy president we got. So, see that? This is the fuel I use, 30% nitro, 11% oil, that has a 50-50 mix. When I say 50-50 mix, it's half nit uh, synthetic, half castor. You must use fuel with half castor oil, half synthetic oil, okay? Right? You can't just use oil that's 100% synthetic with uh, nitro fuel, you can't, right? That That's... That's too clean of a fuel. That's um, that's only good for like short bursts, rap, rap, rap. Not for long full throttle runs. If you guys are gonna be at full throttle, like I like to squeeze my shit and hold it, for long <laughs> period of runs, straightaways, you must have castor oil in there. Okay, airplane fuel. Think about it a little bit. Airplane fuel. It's all castor. Those suckers are full throttle always. All right. Now. <clears throat> Um, so you have to have the perfect mix. 50-50 is all you need, all right? It will do everything, <clears throat> all right? You can even race the shit, and you'll have better protection, all right? If some of you guys aren't good with tuning or whatever, you're learning out, starting out, it'll be less forgiving, <clears throat> all right? If you have 8%, you'll blow your shit, all right? You'll wear out your motor, you'll kill your engine. <clears throat> with 11%, it's just enough. It's not 16%, you don't want too much oil. I'm against too much oil, fuck too much oil. Too much oil means too much heat, okay? Never run too much oil like those tracks of shit fuels and all that crap, <laughs> all right? Um, tracks is... O'Donnell's. Um, O'Donnell's. Any fuel, any name, as long as it's 50% castor, 50% synthetic, right? 30% nitro, make sure it's 30% nitro. It'll run cooler than the 20% and it'll run better, right? Um, now, what the hell, if you guys want to get a case or quartz or whatever, alright, what the hell is that? What's up, Nitro Nation? As always, Muggy Maniacs, you know, got the, the Mr. Za Bodegel videos going. Why he's doing some wrenching in the cave. I'm always watching somebody. Sometimes I'm watching... Raja 111, which we'll get to him in a second. I want to comment on a, a, a video that he just uploaded. Uh, kind of throwing my two cents. I already um, commented and let him know. I don't know if I got a response back from him. But anyway, uh, of, you know, a video that where he was talking about uh, DE racing rims. But anyway, you know, whoever may be an elite. I watch some Elite sometimes and see what the Elite's wrenching on lately. You know, whoever. You know, the guys that I'm always, you know, giving credit to where credit's due. You know, my my main Brat brothers or Nitro brothers. You know, I'm always watching somebody while I'm doing my, uh, my wrenching. So anyway, 
on that video, you guys noticed, because I had a, I have a few people that asked me about fuel as well. Um, what fuel do I run? Now, I, I remember I did a video not too long ago on fuel. I'm going to show you a little bit of what how I run, what I do with my fuel, and even show you the evidence of, the, or the results, I should say, of running my fuel the way that I do. Okay? Now, as John said, if you notice, he runs only Byron's, okay? And he's run many fuels. I have ran a lot of fuels as well. Probably not, I don't think every fuel that's out there, I know it, not every fuel. But I've ran enough fuels to where I know what's, what works for me um, in all conditions. And I know the fuel that it, and some of the things that I may tell you right now may sound kind of weird or, or like, you know, not normal, <laughs> but it is what it is. Trust me. I mean, fuel makes a big difference in how you, you, your motor runs, how long it lasts, the kind of protection you're getting, the performance you're getting, uh, a lot of different things. Okay. Um. Hey, but he said, the main thing that I don't know if you notice that he said is you, whatever fuel you run, you need to run 50-50. 50 synthetic, 50 castrol in the nitro mixture. 3011 is what he runs. That's what I run. When I break in, I use Byron's, but I add uh, other additives to make it the percentage of lubrication thicker. Because when you're breaking in a motor, obviously you want it as thick and juicy and rich as possible to protect the motor during the break-in. And that's what I do with all my motors. Um, this here that you're looking at, you guys have obviously seen the last video that I ran. Pretty much, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm not the one to brag, but that's pretty much a perfect tune. <laughs> this motor, this R5, Red's R5 Team Edition that's modded by Rick at R&B Mods, um, is pretty pretty dialed in uh, there's nothing that I need to do with it low end needles definitely perfect idle is perfect now these things won't stay like this because of the weather changing hot cold and so forth you know that that is a, a factor in in how your motor stays tuned as well it's because it's tuned and dialed in perfectly right now doesn't mean when I go run it it's gonna and I, you always want to be prepared to make adjustments but I know for a fact that I'm not messing with any bottom end um, or the idle <laughs> the only thing I'd be messing with would be the high end needle that's it like you said when I when you when I when you seen this thing running on the last video there was nothing I did to it matter of fact it still has the same uh, adjustment on the top end. I think I lean the top end a little bit, but not much. This thing fires right up, man. This this motor is sick. I love this Reds. I'm in the search of another one. I I might if I can find another one. Is good condition as this one. Same motor. It's a Reds R5.21 R5 Team Edition. This is like two years old. The new ones are red. The looks similar to this, the new R5s, but it's red. This is an older one. I mean, I paid 135, 130 something bucks for this thing delivered to my to my door, and it had a gallon through it. I ran a little bit more, a little bit more fuel through it. And then I sent it to Rick. He modded it at RB Mods. Um, when I got it back, broke it in again. This motor was so... These Reds motors, when you're breaking them in, man, they're so easy to break in. I think I mentioned in my video. This thing loves to run really, really warm, though, too. Around 250 to 300 is when this thing comes alive. Another thing, too, yesterday when I was running, I've shimmed this motor, too. I think on one of my videos, I mentioned to you guys that this motor, this motor, this Reds was modded the same time, the same, when, when I sent this to get modded, was when I got my Pico .28 P3 modded, and also 
when I got this Novarasi 28.8 Rex Legend modded. Though these three motors got modded the same, and I try to keep track up on them as far as when, when, as I'm as I was breaking them in. They're pretty much broken in now, but the Reds does have more fuel than the other ones. Um, these two here are you know dialed in, but not where I want them. Not not like this. This motor here is like. This motor added the three motors, my modded motors. This one here is the mo this one is like perfect. There's nothing else I can do to it. Um, the last thing I did to it, like I said, is I shimmed it. I'm running about a 50, I think 54 head shim in here, which by the way is perfect. This thing, I could, I was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it again, and and I'll show you guys this thing here, man. I kept running and running and. And I was just pinning the throttle, even after I got done videoing uh, yesterday. And the hottest this thing would get is like 170. That was it. The temperatures, since I head shinned, are so much cooler than it was before. Um, plus the fuel economy on this thing. Oh my god. Yesterday, I only ran a tank. I ran a full tank, maybe a little bit more. And I swear... And I didn't even run the whole full tank. I was running for over an hour. And I still had a quarter tank left. I've never had the fuel economy as best as this thing is. I mean, this thing gets killer fuel mileage. Better than I've ever seen. And it's modded. It's not stock. So this modded point twenty one Reds will run on a gallon of fuel for over an hour. Easy. These beasts right here, this... Pico point twenty eight point uh, twenty eight or the Rex Legend point twenty eight over there. These things, man. If I get forty five minutes out of a full tank, I'm very very lucky. That's stretching it, because these things eat gas. Maybe it's because the tune isn't as dialed in yet. Um, I think I took a head shim out on this one too. Matter of fact, I did. So we're gonna see. This one here, the last time I ran it, it had like a point fifty shim in it. Um, I think I took it down to like a point forty. So this motor is shimmed, shimmed right now, but I haven't ran it since I shimmed it. So we'll see. I don't think the the Novarossi has any shims in it. Next time I run it, and I'm gonna pull it apart. I'll check. But anyway, this thing is shimming is the last tuning option that you guys have as far as your tuning. You know, we always talk about you know your idle, your high end, your low end needle is probably the most important. Once you get your low end needle dialed in, I mean you're pretty much you know you're good to go um and it's just a matter of of adjusting your high end but this thing with that i mean when you're dealing with the head shims you know like i said 0.40 to up to 0.70 somewhere in there this thing's like a 54 um and it's like perfect man it runs great obviously idles perfect um when I let off the throttle, man, it drop the idle drops and purrs like a kitten. Um, the only thing that I could see that I want to check is I might change the header. This head, there's a different header that comes with this work. This one is 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 a different header than the one that comes with it. I might change this header. I'd like a little bit more top end. Oh, I might leave it. I like to. I mean, I really haven't got a chance to run this thing out in the open you know running on my block like you've seen uh you only got so much room to really i couldn't really get it i was only three quarters throttle i didn't even really pin it full throttle i didn't have enough room but anyway fuel fuel mileage cool the uh, temperature performance everything i mean this thing's like perfect perfect dialed in <laughs> That's where, that's good. This is kind of like the benchmark now of where these motors I want them. This Pico I want to run like this, and as well as the Novarossi. And I've got a little bit more tuning to do on those two, and I will be getting to those soon. More than likely, after the Reds, we'll be getting into the, the, uh, the Mugen MBX 7 uh, R. Got my hole cut out so I can refuel. <laughs> Body's uh, ready to get broken in, so 
Got the 28.8 Rex Legend here. Got the Novarasi 9886 with the 41032. I might try this header setup on the uh, the buggy, the Megan buggy. Let's see how that works. I might do that. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that before I run it. I might rip that header and that pipe off there and throw it on the Reds. Throw it on the, the, the Reds R5 with the uh, the um, on the NBX buggy. So anyway, that thing's dialed. It was just kind of cleaning up a little bit. It's going to get dirty again. So anyway, um, the fuel that I use, like John says in his video that you've seen, Byron's 30... 11. Now I get it by the gallons. You can get it in course, wherever. Some people mention other fuels. I've used O'Donnell's. I've used VP. I've used uh, Torco. I've used um, Nitrotain, which is kind of a basically the same people that make VP make Nitrotain. I mean, there's a lot of fuels out there. The one that I get that I've used and only will use is Byron's. Now, the O'Donnell's, I've used it, and other O'Donnell's. The problem that, that I didn't like about the O'Donnell's... So, let me give you a little bit of history on O'Donnell's real quick. O'Donnell's, the fuel, there used to be... Oh, the fuel bottles were white. If you can find the fuel bottles that are in white... Um, those are the old O'Donnell's uh, fuel, which was good. The new O'Donnell's fuel... It's in a clear bottle is garbage. Uh, the guy that used to own and this is I, I I found this out a while back from a guy that works at a local hobby shop. He is friends with the owner the the old owner of O'Donnell's Fuel. Now O'Donnell's Fuel or O'Donnell's company where they were getting the fuel from um, many many years ago. They, they, something happened, and anyways, they stopped doing business with each other. Because all of these companies go through a, a main fuel company to get their fuel. Byron's doesn't make their fuel. It's a, there's a fuel company that they go through, the same as VP and other fuels, that they get their fuel from. Their name is just on it. Okay, so anyway, this, the guy that owned the O'Donnell's fuel brand, uh, had a fallout with the fuel company. So the fuel switched. Okay, the old O'Donnell's fuel was okay, but even the, the problem with O'Donnell's fuel is the lubrication on it's really low. It's like 8%, and I ran it. That was the first fuel that I ever ran in nitro almost four years ago now was O'Donnell's. The problem was when I took the motor apart to check it, to inspect the motor, uh, it was really, really dry because of the low lubrication and because of the kind of synthetics that O'Donnell used. So I stopped using it. And I had a hard time tuning it all the time. I mean, I eventually would tune it, but it was just real rough tuning it. So I stopped using O'Donnell's fuel, and that's when I started using Byron's. And ever since I started using Byron's, I have never had a tuning issue. I've never had an issue with the motor when I pull it apart and look at it, it, it not being lubricated. Because uh, Byron's has, you know, 11% lubrication in their synthetics that they use. But like Mr. Za said in the video, whatever fuel you use, just make sure there's 50% castrol, 50% synthetic. Okay, it's got to be half and half for nitro. Okay, and he told you why. You know, we're on the throttle. All If you're racing, you can, you know, people that race, they don't use 30% uh, or, I mean, they don't use 11%. Uh, Most of the race fuels are uh, 20, 20. I think that's the percentage on it. So here's when you buy VP. Now VP is good fuel. It's thirty percent nitro and it's nine percent oil. Okay, I ran VP. The both their twenty percent and their thirty percent, and I still use. I still have some. I don't use it anymore. I just have some laying around from last time I used it. But the problem I had when I ran the VP fuel is. Is it the the Taiwan, the Japanese, OS, Afna, you know, Alphas, you know, all those Japanese motors, they, they love this fuel, man. I got killer fuel mileage. The temperatures were really, because uh, your fuel has a lot to do with the temperature of your motor, too. Okay. Um, 
the VP fuel was great, but when I tried running the VP fuel in my Novorossi, my Reds, Pico, any Italian motor that I ran this fuel in, it did not like it. <laughs> now, like I said, that might sound like you guys are like, man, Muggy, what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean it doesn't like it? Well, it, it doesn't. It, I, had, I couldn't tune it right. It wouldn't stay in tune. The temperatures were all over the place. It was just, it didn't like it. Like I said, I ran it on OS's and, and, and rice burner motors, and this fuel was awesome. It loved it. But when I tried running VP on Italian motors, man, they hated that shit. They didn't like it. I had a hard time with it. And as soon as I switched, switched from that to, to Byron's, I didn't have a problem. And I've never had a problem since. So this is great fuel. If me personally, if I was going to run this fuel, I would only run it through Japanese or Asian motors. It's a little bit cheaper than Byron's. It might be easier to get. But bottom line, again, as long as you're running 50% castrol, 50% synthetic in the fuel mixture. Now I'm not talking about the 30%, the percentage of the nitro percentage, or the lubrication. The nitro 30% or whatever you're running. You need to make sure that that 30%, it's 50% of that is castrol or, uh, and 50% of it is synthetic, okay? If you want your motor to last, if you want it easy to tune, if you want it to run, all that. So anyway, whatever fuel you can get as long as it's 50-50. 50% castrol, 50% synthetic, okay? That's... You heard what Mr. Zah said, and I feel the same way. And I just run Byron's, man. If you can't, you can get Byron's. You're just going to have to order it. You might have to get it by the case. But if you can't get Byron's, run whatever you want. It's up to you. I don't care what fuel you guys run. Just make it 50-50. Okay? Now, the fuel mixture that I do is I run the 30 11, but I increase my lubrication by at least 2%. Okay, now you're gonna have to figure it out. You can Google it. You can Google and say, I, I Googled it, what's 2% of, you know, of, of, of a quart, say, and it'll tell you in measurements. I, I found out that. Uh, two percent of a quart percentage. I mean, in teaspoons. That way, I could measure because I add stuff to my my regular thirty percent nitro fuel. I don't just run it like that. I always put a little bit of marble mister oil, always, and I run a little bit of the Novorossi engine oil. Now, this is just me. You guys do what the hell you want. I'm not telling you guys, hey, you know, because people are like, hey, well, what do you mean? You put engine oil and you put uh, 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 Marvel Mister Oil in your fuel? Yeah, well, in your real car, in my real cars, I've always ran Marvel Mister Oil. Always. This stuff will protect your lifters. It improves compressions. What it's, you know, um, it lubricates your upper cylinder or in your real car for smoother idling, and keeps engine clean from sludge. So all the you got to remember, the Nitro is just a scaled down version of a real motor. Okay, a real piston, real, you know, crank rod, compression, all that. It's a real miniature motor. So that's why I've always used this in real cars. So I, when I started using this in my natural fuel, man, I've ran it. Nothing, that's the way I run it. Okay. And if you look, I mean, just to give you an example, because some people were like, well, you know, that doesn't, I've never heard of that or, you know. This is what, a, and I just ran this. And I run pretty rich, too. Here, let me show you. See that plug? This plug, this is, I just pulled this out of my reds. You guys can see that. Come on, camera, focus. This plug has a gallon, over a gallon through it now. Okay? Any questions? Perfect. I mean, you can't get any better than that. 
This plug is perfect. And it has a gallon, over a gallon, probably about a gallon and a half now, running rich, rich, richer than normal. <laughs> I just like to run rich. That's all. Okay. And this is what I do. I, use, I, I, I add marble mistral and I add Novorossi engine oil. This is the engine oil. And this is good for anything lubricating. I use this on everything. I need to get more of this. This is the engine oil that they use in the Novorossi factories on their motors. So I make, have a little bit of this, a little bit of Marvel, mixed in with my Byron's. That's what I run. So, like I said, you guys do what you want. I'm just sharing with you. Sharon is caring of what I run and the nitro fuel that I run. And a little bit about, you know, nitro fuel. I don't want to turn this into a fuel video, but, you know, I have a lot of people that ask me, about the fuel and you know I was watching the Mr. Za over there video and I remember him running that video or him talking about that you know so I mean that's where I learned it from from him and other people so but anyway another the thing that I want to touch about on uh, Raja was he was talking about the DE racing rims now I've had prob one problem once with DE racing rims I don't, it's on one of my videos. Something happened to one of the hexes. And I've had rims. And any issue that I've ever had, and I've only had one, I can't say issues. The one issue that I had with the DE Racing rim, I called the owner, which, by the way, they're local to me. Well, not local. They're like two hours away, the company, um, in Southern California. And I talk, told him the issue that I had with my rim. And he didn't just send me one or two rims to replace the rim. He sent me four brand new DE racing rims. So my suggestion, and you guys have seen my videos. There was one I did. You can go back on it. Get what you paid for. Maybe I'll do another one. about Because I know that a lot of us have to do... We have to rely on the internet eBay and so forth as far as shipping and getting our shit. So I've been through four years of all that eBay bullshit, having it out with, with, with people, sell, sellers and companies, you know, either not getting your shit here on time, taking forever, sending you the wrong shit, uh, having problems with your stuff, servos going out, blah, 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 all that bullshit. So trust me, I'm an expert on that. And I don't put up with, I have very, I have zero tolerance for any of that shit. Because I've got, excuse my language, but I've got fucked in the ass many times, okay, from shipping, from from companies on eBay, getting my nitro shit. <coughs> Sorry about that, uh, using that uh, expression, but, you know, I mean, it's about as blunt as I can put it. <laughs> so if you like getting sand thrown up in your ass and you like taking it and getting screwed in the ass all the time by these companies and just saying oh well it's too much of a hassle uh, you know to blah 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 let me just fix the problem you know and this is not nothing bad about raja i i i i sent him a, I, I i made a comment on that video i don't know if he's read it yet about that and i said listen we can't just be biased about okay well i got a fucked up ram okay excuse my language let me just fix it. Uh, it's too much of a hassle to call the company. Well, then how is the company going to ever address this problem? And they're going to and they're and they're not because they don't know from us. Don't be that to me personally. And I hope Raja doesn't take this the wrong way. That's laziness for me to say. You know what? I know these tires. I can call a company and they're going to probably send me a brand new set. Fuck it. Let me just let me fix it myself. Fuck that. I've done that. Been there. Done that. I don't do that shit. I'm, I'll fix it, yes, but I will let them know, listen, your rims don't fucking fit, Mr. DE guy. They're too small. And I guarantee you, and I talked to the owner of DE Racing, he's cool as fuck. He said, I'm sorry about the problem you've had. I, I've never heard of that. It might just be an isolated incident. Might, you just might all oh, got the only one. One slipped through the cracks. QC didn't catch those set of rims. No problem. He said, let me let me fix that for you. And he didn't just send me one rim, not two rims. He sent me four fucking brand new rims. Those are the rims that I finally put on 
Badlands on. Because I've got, you guys know, I've had yellow Badlands. I've got white Badlands. I mean, I've got yellow DE racing rims. I've got white ones. I want a couple of each color. The three colors that I use on my vehicles. Black, white, and I also have yellow ones. Okay? So, if it wasn't for him taking care of me, I wouldn't be running DE racing rims on my vehicles right now. I guarantee you that. And there's other companies that I've stopped using their shit because they didn't take care of me. Because I told them that I had a problem. They wanted to dick me around and I said, fuck you. Excuse my language. And I don't deal with them. One of the biggest ones is high tech. I ran high tech servos for many, 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 many years. But because they dicked, or, dicked me around on a, on a, on a high tech servo that I had a problem with, I said, fuck high tech and I'm never going to use them again. Whether they're good servos or not. As soon as I switched to Savox, I had a couple issues with Savox servos. Like I know there's some guys that do. Send that shit in. Savox will take care of you. They are stand behind their products. I've got a few servos replaced from Savox. And did I, I didn't, I could have easily said, you know what, fuck Savox because I've had issues with them. But you know what, because their customer service was great and they've always replaced the servo that I had an issue with, I'll continue to deal with Savox until they dick me around and then I'll drop them too. Because they're not the only servo company. Um, am I saying Savox is the best out there? Well, no, but they, they're one of the, the best, and they take care of you more importantly. So my whole, the whole, you know, point of this is, is if you have issues with companies with stuff, don't be biased, man. Fix the problem, sure, because you still want to, you got to, you know, do what you got to do to run your shit, but tell them. Tell them, listen, man, I got some. it's fucked up, it doesn't work right, blah, 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 whatever. And then if they don't deal with you, then you can let us know too. Hey, don't deal with that company. Their customer service sucks. You know, or I had issues with this comp this company and they dicked me around. I tell you guys that. I'm not going to hide that from anybody. That way, otherwise, if we don't do this as, as, a, as a unit, as, you know, all the Nitro Nation out there, then these companies will continue to fuck us and fuck Nitro. And you know what? I'm not going to let that happen if I can help it. So... Like I said, hope Raja, you know, took my advice, even though he's going to fix those rims. Fuck that. I'm not dremol dremoling shit. I'm not going to go through all that. I mean, I'm not saying that I won't, but I mean, that to me is more of a waste of time than just getting on the horn and saying, hey, DE, I got these rims. They're fucked up. Can you help me out? And I guarantee you, they'll send you a brand new set of four brand new rims. No problem. Yeah, you're going to have to take them off the tires and unglue them and re -glue them. Who cares? Big deal. I'd rather do that than fuck around with a drum, Dremel and Dremel Mickey Mouse my shit. I mean, that's just me personally. You know, like I said, this isn't nothing bad about Roger. But I just wanted to, to throw my, my input on that video that he did. Because me personally, sure I would have done when I got it done. And I've done that to rims. I put, took, a, took a, an old hex off of one of my vehicles or, or extra one and put it in the end right here and hammered that shit back and forth pulled it out hammered and eventually it it made to where they fit okay but at the same time i've told those comp the company that your rims are too small and i'm they listen they've always sent me replacements i've had that happen the same thing that roger's going through i've had that happen before and then I had the DE racing room where it was kind of one of them started to strip out a little bit. <clears throat> Whether it was my fault of not tightening it enough or, or whatever, DE took care of me. The company that I got the rims that they didn't fit, they took care of me and sent me brand new ones. So anyway, don't put up with that shit. Tell the companies, listen, this is the deal. This is what happened. And then let us know, hey, they took care of me or let us know, hey, you know, I want to know. I don't want to be fucking with nobody that doesn't want to take care of their customers that ain't what this is about man i mean that's that's a huge issue because we get a lot of newbies that that might be discouraged because of that and they might want to quit nitro and go to fucking e-word because they're tired of dealing with with all this bullshit they got to deal with on ebay well listen i've done all i've done all the fucking experiment and i've been the lab rat for you guys for the last four years okay so that's why i'm telling you man if you have an issue Man, if you need help with it, let the Muggy Maniac know. I'll help you guys out. Just don't take that shit lightly, man. Get what's coming to you. Get what's yours, man. Don't let this company, excuse my language, fuck you. Okay? Or they will continue to do it to everybody. 
Anyway, that kind of gets the muggy fired up a little bit because I man, I went through so much shit. I just got through going through some with uh, with those J uh, JR, the JX servos. I had an issue with one of them. Okay, one company that I got them through took care of me. The other company's giving me the runaround. So I said, you know what? Fuck that company. Superior Hobbies WK. If you run across Superior Hobbies, don't fuck with them because they're not gonna. They might take care of you, but it's gonna take forever. They fucking give you the runaround, man. I had to have eBay step in on that shit so I can get my money back. Yeah, it's only 20-something bucks, but that ain't the point. The point is that they wanted to dick me around. Fuck that. I paid you. I had an issue. You should stand behind your shit and take care of the customer. You know, that, you know take care of me. Don't dick me around or I'm never going to deal with your shit. And I'm going to tell all the Nitro Nation, don't fuck with superior Hobby WK. It's a company that sells a lot of these JX servos. Don't fuck with them. There's other companies that sell them. It's not JR's prop. JX's problem. It's that company sucks. So anyway, that's all I got, people. Muggy Maniacs got a... I think I'm going to change the header on the reds. I don't know. I might just leave it. It's running pretty sweet. I might go up to a 14 tooth. But I might not mess with that either. It's just, it's dialed in. I mean, what else can I do? I mean, it's almost kind of boring when I'm running, when I was running this thing yesterday because I, there wasn't any issues. I like, that's funny because when I have issues, I'll be like, dang, man, it messes up my, my brap session. But then when I don't have issues and everything's running smooth, motor's dialed in, I was just leaning it out a little bit. I'm like, come on, man, break. Something happened so I can, nothing serious but you know so i can so i can turn wrenches man i love turning wrenches man i mean i get as much pleasure out of fixing and turning wrenches and working on my shit as i do running it that may sound kind of weird to some people but hey that's the muggy maniac that's when you know you're sick in the head nitro gearhead okay sick because when you say that when you say i like when my shit breaks or it's not running right so I can try to figure something out or I have to wrench on it. <laughs> Some people are like, fuck, why would you want to do that? <laughs> because that's just the way I am, man. But anyway, so that's all I got, people. So you run your fuel the way you want. That's how I run my Byron's. You might have to get it online. Some people can't get Byron's where they're at. They're, the only reason I ran VP that one time is because I had a hard time getting Byron's. Thank God for my local hobby company. If they don't do anything for me, which... They really don't because they don't carry any nitro shit. Um, at least they carry my my oils and my fuel. <laughs> so and a few tools here and there. But other than that, nah, I gotta get everything online just like you guys do. That's why I know about ordering your shit and making sure that these companies give you your shit and you get taken care of, man. So um, anyway, that's it. Magic me, I just wanted to check in. There's going to be more brapping. We're going to get this. Uh, I mean, I look, I'm running the J, JX uh, servo steering on here. Now, because I had the issue with these, I wouldn't run these. I don't trust these yet enough to I would run them on my, my throttle. This servo is so vital, man. If this servo, your throttle, which controls your throttle and your brake, if this servo fucks up, that's when you get runaways. That's when your shit sticks wide open. You don't want this one to fuck up. And trust me, I've had it happen more than once. So I know. So if I know it's a good servo, but I really don't trust it because I've had an issue with it, it'll stay on here as far as steering. These JXs, I will never, ever put on my throttles. Ever. <laughs> steering only. So I recommend them. If you want to put them on your throttle, go ahead. But if they do have an issue with it, and your shit sticks wide open like it's happened to me twice with these servos, I won't run them on my, my throttle no more. So that's my advice on those. They're great servos. I mean, for, for under 30 bucks, like 20 bucks or less, actually, like $20 for one of these, they're good torque, they're, they're fast, and they're torquey, and they're pretty durable so far. I just don't trust them on my throttle. So that's why I would just recommend these steering. They're cheap steering servos. They're pretty durable. Like I said, torquey enough, fast enough for bashing. I don't know if I'd race them, but for bashing, these are good. So I recommend these only for steering. You want to try them on your throttle? 
Just be fair warned. I've had issues with them. So anyway, that's all I got, people. Muggy Maniacs out of here. I will catch you guys on the next video um, where we're going to be running the Reds again. Um, man, like I said, man, this thing is so... Uh, a full tank of fuel. One tank. 150 cc's over an hour. I think it was like an hour and a half <laughs> on this. So it's it's dialed. It's where, where I want it. Um, we're going to get the other... We're going to get the Techno out there soon, and we're going to get the the Mugen out there soon, Truggy, NBX7 too. So um, other than that, I've had a few people ask me suggestions. There's guys out there that got tons of used stuff. Build what you got. Run what you got. Do the best you can at that. Um, I mean, you invested all the money, you know. Take all those, you know. Um, I forgot which guy it is, but anyway, he was telling me. That he's got all this used stuff. And he's got an MBX6. That's a good platform. Build that shit up. He's got a couple low C's. He's got a low C, I think a 2.0 or a 4.0 Truggy. Build those things up. You don't need to buy another vehicle. You've got plenty. I'd work with those. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, somebody also asked about a, a Novorossi motor. I'm not, I don't run 21, .21s too much anymore. The only .21 you're probably going to see me run is this one because it's modified my reds and I, and also when i get my os back i have an os that's getting modified those are the only two 21s and they're going to be ran in my buggy i don't mess with 21s too much a stock point 21 doesn't do shit for me sorry that's personal preference it, it does as much for me as a stock motor does for mr za if you haven't heard him in the past he'll tell you mr za will tell you stock motors do nothing for him well i feel that way about point 21s they do nothing for me unless they're modified <laughs> i'm more into the big boy motors the point 28s the point 32s so forth but like i told this guy he's talking about a point 21 something Novorossi. hey if it's an Novorossi anything it's a good quality motor no need to worry just make sure if you're going to buy one use check the fuel how much has been through it i won't buy any used motor with more than a gallon fuel i'm putting that out there because i see a lot of guys buying used motors you know you'll ask people hey how much if they can't tell you how much fuel is through it i wouldn't run it i, I mean i wouldn't buy it fuck that you need to tell me how much fuel is through it i don't want no motor that's got fucking five gallons of fuel through it excuse my language i'd rather not when i got this reds gallon through it that was it i think when i got the offna it maybe had a gallon through it too those are the only used motors that i've ever bought oh no i the os no it was brand new <laughs> it was crazy because it didn't come with a box or nothing i thought it was used i don't know how the guy had it but it was never fired up the os i got was brand new anyway um yeah so if you're gonna buy used motors i don't stay away from them if they're more than a gallon um also, make sure you ask them what percentages of fuels ran through it. Remember, you can run 20, 25 percent, whatever. But once you run 25 or 30, you can't go back to 25 or 20. You'll fuck your motor up. Excuse my language. So, anyway, that's all I got, people. Uh, Muggy Maniacs got to do a little bit, a um, little bit of fine tuning on the, the the buggy. Get it ready to do some more ripping, which you guys will see soon. We're going to get her out there and bash her and, and beat her up some more and uh, see how she handles it. So anyway, that's all I got. Um, peace out.